Hello everybody, this is Dr. Rawls keeping you informed. So my topic is floxing or being floxed and here what I'm referring to is Lyme disease patients and others being treated with a class of antibiotics called fluoroquinolones. Uh, the two big ones out there are Cipro or Ciprofloxacin and Levaquin or Levofloxacin. Now, these antibiotics have been around a while. They uh, debuted about 30 years ago around the time I was in medical school and they were supposed to be the end all to bacterial resistance. Uh, they were unique because you could get blood levels with oral doses instead of intravenous doses and uh, the drug company said this is going to end all bacterial resistance. Bacteria will never be resistant to these antibiotics. Um, well, the bacteria proved them wrong within several years and, and uh, so bacteria do become resistant to these drugs, but they are more potent than other types of antibiotics. The problem is that within a fairly short period of time of several years, pretty significant side effects started showing up with these drugs. And a lot of times things don't show up on the early studies. It takes years to accumulate evidence and we're still talking about it today. But the big thing is these drugs interfere with collagen synthesis and they're toxic to mitochondria in the body. Now this is especially bad for Lyme disease patients who already have problems with their collagen synthesis being challenged and then you throw this antibiotic on top of it, it can lead to real problems. What kind of problems? A wide range of problems. The earliest ones reported were tendinitis and rupture of tendons, especially the Achilles tendon that uh, moves your heel and your foot. Um, and there were cases of athletes with bilateral tendon rupture that really got everybody's attention um, but it was still considered a fairly low incidence of only 1-2%. to 2 So these antibiotics kept being prescribed and they, they kept being pushed by the drug companies. It's another incidence of the drug companies pushing things that have some real concerns. But it didn't stop there. It, we found out that it also uh, affected all the collagen in the body. Retinal detachments, aortic aneurysms and dissections, heart problems and a range of other symptoms, cognitive, psychological, neurological, endocrine, gastrointestinal. It, this one turned out to be really bad for uh, causing overgrowth of C. diff in the gut. Uh, so a whole range of problems. Now the latest one, and why I'm, I'm doing this uh, short take right now, is that the latest study was uh, put out this month by the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Uh, it was an article defining that mitral and aortic valve regurgitation or leaky valves was much more common in people who used this particular class of antibiotics. Not just the main two, but any of them. And there, there are quite a not, there are several uh, fluoroquinolones out there that are widely prescribed. Um, and, and they're still being prescribed even though in 2008 the FDA put out a black box warning. Well, what is that? Well, it's, it's a restriction on, on use of a drug. Um, and here they suggested that the concerns were great enough with these drugs that this antibiotic should not be used unless there were no alternatives possible, that the only thing that could, be, that could treat the bacteria because of resistance was a fluoroquinolone. But of course, that's not what's happening. A lot of doctors out there are still writing these drugs prolifically for ordinary urinary tract infections and a range of other things because that's what they're hearing from the drug reps and the pharmaceutical companies. Um, and it's a, it's a real problem. Um, but you do have choice, you know. Uh, there are a lot of other good alternatives as far as antibiotics for Lyme disease, but mainly acute Lyme disease. You know, we know that doxycycline and amoxicillin st still work really well. If you're struggling with chronic Lyme disease, though, I would really put in a, uh, a, a, a tip for, for using herbal therapy as your primary because that's going to suppress all the antibiotic resistant forms of these microbes 
And you know, when you look at the chronic infection, these things just don't respond to antibiotic therapy. I think herbs are a better option with less use or minimal use of antibiotics. But if you have Lyme disease, don't let somebody prescribe a fluoroquinolone, Cipro or Levaquin to treat you because it can really affect your collagen synthesis. And even if you don't end up with one of the really bad problems like a tendon rupture or something like that, it's still affecting your body in a negative way. There are better choices out there. There are a lot better choices out there. For, so for this one, better stick with the other choices. Stay away from Cipro, Leviquin, fluoroquinolones. They're just better options out there. Take care and be well.